is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, let's do it one more time. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Children of God, welcome home. Welcome home to First Presbyterian Church of Richardson on this Easter Sunday. Whether you are worshiping here in the sanctuary or you are worshiping online, we are grateful that you are here. Whatever you bring with you this day, wherever you've been, whatever you are feeling, you are welcome here. In response to God's love and grace, we are seeking to be a community that embraces, includes, and empowers you because we are not whole without you. As we worship, nurture, and serve together this day, we hope that you feel Christ's presence among us. If you're worshiping in the sanctuary, there should be a red friendship folder at the end of your pew. If you're worshiping online, there should be a link in the chat or in the comments. Wherever you're worshiping from this morning, we'd love to know that you're worshiping with us. And we'd like to make our words of welcome more personal to you in the coming weeks. So if you can fill out that friendship folder and pass it back and forth along your pew, that would be great. The only announcement I have today is that after worship, there will be an Easter egg hunt on the front lawn, but it does not begin until 10 or 15 minutes after worship, so don't look for those eggs until uh, someone tells you go. So you'll have plenty of time to come and take your pictures with the flowered cross and um, then go find some eggs. There's no upper age limit, so um, <laughs> let's see who finds the most. As we prepare to worship God together this morning, would you join your hearts with me in prayer? Holy God of love, of promise, and of hope, as we worship you this hour, open us up to experience the beauty and power and mystery of Christ's resurrection. Inspire us, speak to us, and breathe new life into us. Amen. Good morning. In body or spirit, please stand and join me in the call to worship. Look, a sliver of light across the horizon, the miracle of a new day. See, the stone is rolled away and the angel calls from within. Feel the freedom of our souls, and the wonder of the Messiah's gift of new life. Hear the hallelujahs as we declare to the world, He has risen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia!
may be seated. As we gather on this joyous occasion of Easter, let us reflect on the significance of this day. Easter is a time of renewal, of rebirth, and of the triumph of the light over darkness, of life over death. Even in the midst of our celebration, let us acknowledge our human frailty and our need of God's grace. Trusting in the one who has been raised from the dead, we confidently confess our sins, assured that we too are renewed through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Join me now in the prayer of confession that is before you. Risen Lord, we have seen the empty tomb, and yet we sometimes act as if we have seen nothing. Why must we continue in fear? Why must we be afraid of death, even after its defeat? Yes, this is a glorious day of myrrh and song, but forgive us when we are quick to forget its good news. Help us be a people of resurrection, not just on this day, but all days. Fill our hearts with your resurrection promise of life, that we might turn from sin and be renewed. Eliminate from us the fear of sin, that we might tell this glad story, that Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. This we pray in the name of your risen Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Siblings in Christ, hear the good news of the gospel. The tomb is empty. Our Lord and Savior has risen from the grave. That which has been dead is alive. No barrier, none whatsoever can keep us from the love of God. I announce to you this day that our hearts are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. As we rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us also share in the peace that Christ offers us. The priests of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Out of there for thought about it this morning. She's doing well. Good. Good. Peace of Christ, Sophia. Good to see you. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Good morning. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ, Susan. Good to see you. Thank you. Peace of Christ, Sue. Peace, Jay. Peace of Christ. <laughs> okay, 
but this time we'd like to invite children, big kids, kids at heart to come and join us on the chancel steps. So, I think this is JC's first children's time. Welcome to the chancel steps. Yeah. Good morning, good morning. You can put that in the cart if you want, if you don't want to hold it. It's so good to see you all this morning. It seems like, <laughs> it seems like it's a big day at church today. Any reason why? Uh, can you all say it? Easter. 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 You, don't, you don't sound that excited. Can you say it again? Easter. That's right, that's right. Today we celebrate that Jesus was resurrected, that he came back to life, and that death didn't get the last word. Alleluia. Alleluia. Exactly. Exactly. And out of great love, Jesus rose from the grave. And it's love for each of you, for you, Betty, <laughs> out of love for all of the people gathered here, Jesus really loves his people, his peeps, and he calls us to love God's people, God's peeps, too. So we've been doing that in a few ways throughout Lent, as Genevieve has those fish, that fish bank full of coins. You all can collect the fish banks in just a moment. We also show our love for our neighbors and our peeps by collecting groceries. So you all can go and collect fish banks and groceries and then come back up here and meet us at the grocery cart. You know where to go. Wow, that's a lot of coins, Grace. <laughs> Gigi, go, you gotta go get the groceries. I know what to do. Hey, groceries. Very good. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, good job, John. Four. That is a good question. Let's do it right here. Can you see what it says? Peeps. Peeps. That's right. I able to get one. And so we're going to pray, and then you can take one of these peeps so that you are reminded as you eat this candy later that you are one of Jesus' peeps, and he loves you very much. So... Um, but you have to ask your parents before you bust into these peeps, okay? <laughs> very good, very good. Yeah, we can. Thank you very much. Okay, let's put a hand on a cart, and if you can't reach the cart, you can put a hand on the shoulder of the person in front of you. And Pastor Alice is gonna pray. Let us pray. Holy God, Holy God, we thank you that you love us. Help us to love other peeps like you love us. Help us to always live that Jesus is risen. Amen. Uh huh. I think they all taste the same, like marshmallows. They are marshmallow flavored lollipops. Mmm. Uh huh. You're welcome.
Please join your hearts with me in prayer. Divine Redeemer, bringer of life, open us to the wisdom of your word today and enlighten us with your truth. Liberate us from all that distracts us and turns us from your path. Guide us and ground us in Christ's everlasting hope. Amen. Our first scripture is Psalm 118, verses 1 through 2 and 14 through 24. Listen now for God's word. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The grass withers, the flower fades. The word of our God will stand forever. Listen now for Mark's story of that first Easter morning. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. So the women went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. The grass withers and the flowers fade. The word of our God will stand forever. So I must admit to you that Mark's story of that first Easter morning isn't the one I'm typically drawn to. When I think of Easter, Mark's story isn't what comes to mind. And the way he ends his story, the women said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Come on, dude, what kind of ending is that? 
It's not necessarily the ending that we want or expect. There's no early morning run for Peter and the other disciples or Mary Magdalene turning around and recognizing the risen Jesus standing before her like there is in John's Easter story. There's no risen Jesus appearing to disciples on the road to Emmaus as in Luke's Easter story. There's no guard at the tomb, there's no earthquake, there's no women running to share the good news with joy, as in Matthew's story. For Mark, there's none of that. Because for Mark, the Easter story, the gospel itself, ends with the women fleeing from the tomb, seized with terror and amazement, with their lips sealed in fear. If you're not a fan of how Mark chose to end the story, you're not alone. Others throughout history were frustrated and displeased with Mark's abrupt conclusion. Some were convinced that the pages with the real ending had been lost or tossed aside. Others were unwilling to accept that fear and silence got the last word in Mark's gospel. So they chose to add to Mark's manuscript by writing an entirely new ending. According to Mark, on that first Easter morning, just as the sun had made its first appearance for the day, three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, went to Jesus' tomb. These women had journeyed with Jesus for quite some time, Two days prior, they had witnessed the death of their friend and teacher upon the cross. They had seen exactly where he had been buried, and now they came to anoint his body. They sought some closure with a raw determination in the midst of overwhelming anger and grief and fear. So they headed to the tomb spices in hand, concerned about how they'd, they'd managed to roll the heavy stone aside and get into the tomb. But then to their surprise, they discovered the stone had already been rolled away. And then when they went into the tomb, expecting to see Jesus's dead body, instead, a stranger dressed in a white robe was sitting inside. Jesus' absence and the stranger's presence alarmed the women. They were overwhelmed by surprise and perplexity. And then the stranger spoke to them. Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. The women then flee from the tomb. They're beside themselves. Their heads are spinning. They were afraid. They said nothing to anyone. The end, according to Mark. (laughs) And yet, those women leaving the tomb lead me to wonder if Mark's ending to the Easter story deserves another chance. Because like Mary, Mary and Salome, we know all too well what it feels like to be afraid, to feel distraught and disoriented, unable to make sense of what we're seeing, what we're hearing, what we're experiencing. Like those faithful women, we know what it's like when things don't go as expected, when the future we'd imagined for ourselves doesn't unfold. Even when we've prayed like crazy and tried our very best and followed all the rules to a T, we know that not every ending is a happy one that not every story ends in a way that's all pretty and tied up with a bow, like the cancer that never went into remission, 
or that relationship that ended in disrepair, or that endless cycle of trying to make ends meet month after month only to be paying your rent late once again. We know all too well what it feels like to be a part of an ending that leaves us distraught and disoriented. When all we want to do is just run back home and not say a word to anyone. So many of our own stories and those that we witness seem to end like Mark's ending to his gospel. And yet, even though that abrupt ending might leave us frustrated and confused, Mark's ending is not Jesus' ending. Mark shares the good news that the tomb is open, that death does not, will not, will never get the last word, even when we're unready and unwilling to accept that reality. The stranger sitting inside the tomb confirms this reality to the women, saying that resurrection is reality, Jesus has been raised. And then the stranger tells them some more. Go, he says. Tell the disciples, Jesus has gone on ahead of you to Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. The stranger's words are both a promise and a command. His news leaves the women at that uncomfortable crossroads of, I believe and I am afraid. It's a moment that one pastor describes as terrifying and amazing because that's when God's incomprehensible work of redemption collides in real time with the broken bewilderment of our lives. I'm grateful that Mark didn't deny that tension or try to smooth it out and make resurrection more palatable. Because Mark's Easter story, it feels honest and real and familiar. And yet, even in his seemingly abrupt ending, Mark affirmed that Jesus had gone on ahead of them through the words of that stranger. In Mark's gospel, Jesus is always ahead of the disciples. There's nowhere they go where he hasn't been. And all along the journey, Jesus invites them to follow behind him. Remember, way back at the beginning of the gospel, at the edge of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus calls to Simon and Andrew, to James and John, follow me, he says. A little later on, when Peter is unwilling to accept Jesus' prediction about his suffering and death, he rebukes Peter. He says, get behind me, Satan. And then Jesus says, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross. Jesus is always ahead of the disciples. And that's still true at that empty tomb on Easter morning. And so his invitation is still the same. Follow, follow me. The women are to follow Jesus to Galilee, to the place where Jesus' ministry began. They are to follow Jesus out into the world, and it's there that they will begin to experience the reality of resurrection. It's there where they will glimpse the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. It's there that that good news will finally sink in. And maybe the fear will find a back seat. Because Jesus isn't dead. He isn't trapped behind a heavy stone inside a tomb. He is risen. He is alive. Jesus is on the loose in Galilee, and he's on the loose in the world today. God's justice is still on the move, not just in heaven, but right here on earth. Hope is alive. God in Christ has rewritten all of our endings. And the resurrected Jesus, 
our risen Lord, bids us to follow him. Even if, like those women at the tomb, we too are standing at that tense crossroads of, I believe and I am afraid. Even if we're standing there, the tomb is empty. And that means that God is not done. It means that there is still more God is doing and will do. God continues to shape the world as it is into the world as it shall be. That empty tomb on that early Easter morning, it thrust the women into a new reality, one that they had never fathomed before, one that turns the world upside down, a reality that overturns expectations and defies the world's norms. Because in Christ, resurrection is reality. It's not just a distance hope, but it's a promise experienced here and now. Death and despair don't get the last word. As we imagine ourselves standing at the empty tomb this day, we too are thrust once again into resurrection reality, challenged to hold on to that truth even when the good news seems too impossible or too good to be true in the Good Friday world in which we live. Maybe Mark's ending to his gospel, maybe it's not such a bad ending after all. Because Mark points us to a vibrant reality in which Jesus has already gone on ahead of us. He's on the loose in the world. Will we follow him to Galilee and beyond? Not just this morning, but what about in the days ahead? How will our lives continue the story of that first Easter morning as we believe and live into that beautiful truth that was voiced by the stranger and witnessed by the women? Jesus has been raised. He is not here. So go on now. He's going ahead of him, ahead of you. And there, you will see him just as he told you. Will our alleluias and Easter proclamations join with those gospel writers and those first lady preachers of the good news? I sure hope so. For Easter brings not an ending, but an entirely new beginning, one of hope and promise and resurrection. Friends, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
friends, having heard the word proclaimed, let us affirm our faith. What do you believe? This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved, if we hold it fast that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. You may be seated. Easter is a time of reflection, gratitude, and renewed commitment to our faith journey. In this season of abundant blessings, we are called to give generously from the heart, just as God has generously given to us. Your faithful giving enables us to continue spreading the love of Christ, serving those in need, and nurturing spiritual growth within our congregation. Will the ushers please come forward?
be seated. Friends, we come to this table as ones invited, and all are welcome because Jesus said that we would come from north and south, from east and west. All are welcome to come and share in the bread that Jesus offers, his body broken for ours. All are welcome to come and share in the cup that Jesus offers, his blood shed for ours. We do this in remembrance of Jesus, not as ones who visit the tomb of the dead. We do this in remembrance of Jesus as ones who share in his resurrected life. And as we remember, we also proclaim that our risen Lord will indeed come again. So come and be fed one and all at the table of our Lord. All are invited. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us pray. When only emptiness stretched out, you spoke at that time, joyous God, and goodness and beauty sprang forth, swallows darting in the skies, young rabbits scampering in the grass, hippos splashing in rivers. All this wonder and joy was your gift to your children created in your image. But we ran to play with death when sin opened the gates of seduction. Time after time, you sent the prophets to remind us of your never-ending love, but we chose to remain in sin's tomb, the stone of our rebellion locking us away. So you sent your hopeful heart, your grace met flesh, so we might not be given over to death. With those who see and believe, with those who stand and question, we lift our Easter songs to you. have clung to your glory, Jesus chose to become human at that time, so we might be filled with your grace. When we stood against the wall, wondering if anyone noticed us, he came to take us by the hand, to teach us new dance steps. When our lives crumble around us and we lie scattered on the ground, he gathers us up, reshapes us into your beloved community. When we were unable to break the power of evil over us, he allowed sin to toss him aside like a pebble in a shoe until he was raised from the tomb because you refused to give us over to death. As we stand before the empty tomb, celebrating the great news of this day, we have that faith which is a mystery. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. At this time and this place, pour out your spirit upon your people and on the gifts of the feast of the resurrection. May the bread which is broken open like the tomb. Strengthen us so we may go to rebuild shattered hopes, to bind up the hurts of the world. May the cup which is filled with the fruits of your steadfast love nourish us to leave the shadows of our fears and doubts, to stand with the lonely and forgotten, to listen to the cries of the world. And in that time to come, when we will be gathered with all our siblings of every place and every moment, we will sing your praises, God and community, holy in one, as you hold on to us forever. We are bold to pray together the prayer that Christ taught us, joining our voices in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We remember with thanksgiving when Jesus gathered his disciples, his closest of friends, around a table in the upper room. They shared a meal together in which Jesus took bread. He blessed it and gave thanks for it. Then he broke it open and he shared it with those gathered, saying, take, eat, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. We remember how at the end of the meal, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink it all and remember me. Siblings in Christ, beloved children of God, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again, and he is coming. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Gifts for you, for me, for everyone. Everyone is welcome at Christ's table, so come and eat. The feast is ready. Here in the sanctuary, we will take communion by intinction. As you come forward down these side aisles, uh, you will be given a piece of bread, and then you can dip it in the cup, taking both elements together. There will be two serving stations up front. Make your way down the aisle as you are able. And after receiving communion, you may return to your seat. As an act of embodying our welcome, the juice is non-alcoholic -alcohol and the bread is gluten-free. If for any reason you would prefer to be served in your seat this morning, please raise your hand and our traveling servers will come to you. Would this morning's communion servers please come forward.
Let us pray. <coughs> Faithful and loving God, you have once again fed us at your table, strengthening us for a life lived not in the shadow of the tomb, but in the light of the resurrection. As we go forth today, let us remember all that you have said so that we may live as your people. Amen. Friends, the joyful feast continues, so after worship, come and eat some more, some fruit and some cheese. It's real, it's not fake. <laughs> and uh, feel free to take some flowers home with you. But go now to a responsible involvement in the world, living into resurrection's reality and following Jesus on the loose. And remember that you do not journey alone, but God who created you. Christ who redeems you and the spirit who sustains you go with you this day and all days. Amen. <laughs> 